right guys, Daniel here from Take Note Technologies. Uh, our first video review unboxing this little unit. It's a, a Yarn SC540 M.2 SDI capture card. Uh, pretty cool little unit, uh, really impressed with it. Doesn't support all the features I, I need and I, I'd like, but uh, pretty damn close. Okay, it's a, an unnecessarily big box, as you can see. Let's have a look here. Uh, it's going to be really difficult to open again now, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, unnecessary amount of uh, bubble wrap all on one side, I might like to add. Nothing over there. BNH, you guys seriously need to rework on your packaging. At least wrap it around the whole card. See? Chinese box trick, or what's it? Or Bushka dolls. The dolls within dolls. You know, those things that are so full of themselves. Okay, so pretty much a piece of paper. Tells you where to download the drivers. Um, which is actually a lot more difficult than what it sounds. After retyping the address in like 500 times. Turns out the drivers weren't where they told you. So you have to go on to the other end, the back end of the website to go look for all the drivers and everything. And I found this chap. This little capture card, M.2. Now remember this is M.2 PCI Express, not M.2 Serial ATA. Okay, so as you guys can see, it's got audio inputs over there. Looks to be some sort of Molex connector. I'm not really sure what connector that is. Micro SDI Zoom is what that is called which is where you would plug in. So what I understand, this unit's got pass-through, so SDI pass-through. So you push your input in here and you can push it out. Um, I don't know if it does anything to the signal, if it boosts it or if it, uh, it's just a straight up Y split or anything like that. What else comes in the box? Some good old fashioned nuts. Chassis nuts, I'm sure you guys know what those are for. It's basically if you have some sort of chassis with a hole in it. You, what you do is you take this little pigtail here, this guy out. That would go through there, mount onto it. You'd obviously drill the right size hole for this back end over here. And you'd take the spring washer and the nut, and you just screw it on the back here with a plate inside. Obviously, you've got two cables, you're in and you're out. They're pretty much identical. So, as you can see, that's the cable there two of these cables. One's got the normal BNC, other side's got that micro SDI. What I believe is that this key here is the type M key, which is which tells you it's a four speed serial ATA connection or something to that effect. I did notice a few things when we did some tests on here, which I'll get to you shortly, um, around audio channels, SDI audio channels. Um, let's show you guys pretty much where it would go. You can use things like this on a, uh, on a Nook, uh, you know, the Intel Nux or any sort of micro PC, as long as it's got a four port or four lane PCI Express uh, type M M.2 card or slot. Now, a lot of people don't know what M.2 is. A lot of people do, so for those of you that already do and understand it, I apologize for explaining this to you. But that's an M.2 SSD. As you can see, an M.2, the, the difference is a type M key on this side, yeah. That, that tells you it's for PCI Express, and if you got that key only, it's normally in a serial ATA card only. Uh, guys, remember, if you're working on this kind of stuff, make sure you're wearing an anti-static band, you know, something that's earthed or grounded. Uh, so it'll stop computer parts from getting damaged. Fortunately, we don't have much static here, um, and you can get away with this. As you can see, pretty straightforward. Drop it through, and this was a bit tricky, so I'm gonna take us out of frame for a second, guys. The idea is to get this part here, plugged in over there, and screwed in over there. As you can see, this has got the different sizes for different size M.2 slots. Um, what I have noticed, and I'm not 100% sure on this, so a little bit of clarity would be nice from the manufacturers, but if you want to use this shorter M.2 slot, I was looking, there's no like actual traces where you can see connections going through there. It looks like you can actually just break this board back and it'll fit into a 
the shorter indoor two slots. I haven't tried that. I'm not about to try it anytime soon, um, purely because I actually have some other uses for this card. But I want to show you how this unit works. So let's have a look inside here. Pop it inside. Take the M.2 screw. And here comes the fun part. At least a decent, yeah, if I had a decent screwdriver set here, it would make life a lot better. Yeah. Any one of you guys from iFix or anything like that want to sponsor us something, we'll gladly accept it. Give you guys a few mentions in some future videos. Wish set screwdrivers, not fun. Cheap and nasty, but they work. Cool. So that's pretty much it installed. Obviously, you still have to install drivers and all that on the machine. The idea for this, guys, we want it, we, we need something for a client that uh, travels the world all the time. We used to use a Teradek cube for these guys. They would take the cube, they'd plug it in. It's, it's pretty straightforward, a basic little unit. Hellishly expensive, like ridiculously expensive in my personal opinion. My issues with that unit, every time you need to change any sort of setting on it, it wants to reboot or it needs to re-log into the server and send everything. Whereas if you've got like on Livestream Studio or vMix, any of those sort of streaming solutions, even OBS, you can preset your uh, destination, all that kind of stuff, and you can remote into it as technical support. So when you remote into it as technical support, you've got a bit more freedom, whereas you can't do that on a Teradek, as far as I know. What I want to do on this unit is, on a laptop much like this one, you can actually route the cable through here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that at the top there properly. Basically, CD-ROMs are becoming superfluous. So a lot of the high-end machines still have CD-ROMs, but it's not the CD-ROM I'm after, it's, it's the space I'm after. So, as you can see, let's pop this out quickly. Old school CD-ROM, not much you can do with that. That's your VNC connector, chassis mount. Now, obviously it's not gonna fit directly in that same space, but you can get like a piece of machine metal or something stamped and cut to that profile. Slide it in there, slide this through. Now inside this machine, there's actually like a cable route that you can go through across. Now you'd obviously plug one unit into there and then the other into the other unit. So you guys can see, if I shine this light through here, that's the top of the unit through there. You should be able to see some of the lights coming through that CD drive. All right, that's basically our cable route. Let's get this all installed. I will be back with you guys shortly. Okay guys, as you, as you can see, there it is, the cable's installed. I know you get a four, a four channel version of this card, as well as major or four, four channel versions. I'd be interested to see what the major is like, as I understand it's got a heat sink on it. I don't know if that would fit in this laptop. That's why we did this unit first. My issue with this unit, what I found out, was that it can only accept two channels at a time. So you're left and right from your SDR. And I do know a lot of these uh, sports productions, when they're broadcasting to international TV, they'll have all the audio tracks going out on SDR, but it'll be like SDR channels, channel pairs, one, two, four, which is eight audio channels at the end of the day. And they'll mix that in the studio, or depending on who needs what, or where they're uh, broadcasting to, they'll, they'll change the mix as they need it. So as you see, I've just put one in for now. That's all we need, really need. I believe I've plugged it into the input channel. Okay guys, so just so you know, this is actually one of our staff members' laptops that we just put a temporary drive in that we installed with it on just so we can make sure it works in all areas. I don't want to mess with any of his documents or files that he's got on the laptop. Okay guys, so what I've noticed is with this card so far, it doesn't work with Livestream Studio. I don't know if it's got to do with the SDK or driver support or whatever it is. I've noticed with Livestream Studio, it picks up most webcams and I, did, I thought this would come through as a webcam, which is why I'd like to use it with Livestream Studio. I don't know if the last guys from Livestream Studio or Vimeo see this and they don't want to weigh some input in or give us some feedback, let us know. So I've preset this up with OBS Studio. Um, last thing I did notice about this card is if it's not getting a signal, unlike most other capture cards I've dealt with, mainly the Black Magic stuff, 
it doesn't tell you that it's not getting a signal. So you don't know if you're getting a picture from the card. I find that the Blackmagic products are great in some ways, but I've had issues with uh, cards overheating and that kind of stuff. So you don't know if your feed is actually getting into the box and stopping there, or if there's an internal capture process. Something quite strange I pick up on this, it picks it up as an analog device. Um, those of you that have worked with SDI know that SDI is a serial digital interface, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we've got an SDI cable here coming from the camera, just to give you guys a, an idea. Okay, so SDI cable coming from that camera looking at me right now. You should pick us up pretty quickly, plug that in, and there we are. Full 1080p video feed. As you can see, the delay isn't too bad. It's actually pretty decent for, for an SDI capture card. I mean, if you compare to some of the NDR ways of getting a feed into a laptop and things like that, you, it's pretty slow. I was quite impressed with the card's uh, ease of use once we got all the drivers and everything, and the clarity of the picture is really good. It's got a bit of a strange settings box when you open it. Like, something I think the suppliers need to work on is, it, it seems to be designed for a 1080p display. You can't get to your apply buttons and things like that on a laptop screen. So anything that's uh, 1376 by 786, I think it is, you can't get to the, the bottom half of the screen to apply your settings and things like that. So I found myself plugging in an external monitor that's got a full HD uh, 60 by 9 ratio that I could get to those buttons and apply settings and stuff. Um, I didn't try changing any of the audio settings um, purely because I don't have anything with SDI that pushes out uh, multiple channels. I've got a few other tricks up my sleeve with some Blackmagic capture cards and output cards I'm going to try. And then once I know, I can either leave that down in the description or you know, any questions you guys have, we can test it out and let you know. I did find that it works really nicely with the uh, v uh, VMix software. And we're running a demo version of VMix and I find that VMix supports so many different inputs this Friday. You know, I've yet to find something I've plugged into it that VMix hasn't recognized as yet, which to you guys at VMix, kudos to you. I mean, that's really impressive. What I would like to see is multiple audio channel support on a card like this. Um, we will try the Blackmagic cards, the, the Eco series, I think they're called. See if we can get anything like that, because that means we can just send this laptop out to these shows. It's got the network link, it's got the SDI input, and then I can remote in, whether it's via remote desktop connection or TeamView or anything like that, and change the audio and adjust everything remotely. Thanks guys, uh, thanks for joining us. As you see, it's a pretty decent little card, quite handy. Really, really like this unit. Nice and small and compact. With an Intel Nook and other laptops, if you, if you only needed two audio channel inputs or left and right or even a mono, I think this thing would be ideal for you guys. Um, as I said, we got this unit on BNH, and this unit, including shipping, came to 256 US dollars. If you worked it out in South African rands, it was at the time of purchase it worked out to about 3,300, and then obviously we had some import duties that we had to pay on that, which all in all I think came to an extra 700 rand. For that kind of price, you're lucky to get away with a, a Black Magic uh, mini capture card, things like that, if you can still get them. All the best. Thank you, that's us from Take Note Technology.